welcome to my not a sewing video. I'm Emily and this is some truly not tasty tea. <clears throat> but I'm going to keep drinking it. Um, <laughs> today's tea is it's echinacea because I have been a little tiny bit under the weather ever since getting back from my Port Townsend uh, uh, Victorian Heritage Festival adventure last weekend. I believe it's allergies um, that are bogging me down. So I have taken to sipping several different wellness teas and today's is echinacea. Uh, I usually, I'm not a big sweetener of my teas. Um, if I put sweetener in my tea, I usually just put a tiny little bit. And when it's wellness tea, I actually tend to prefer it without sweetener. Uh, but this echinacea tea needs like a bucket of honey or something because, whew. Bruh. Today's mug makes me look like a giant, but it's actually a very small mug. Um, I am not sure if I've shown it before. It is this beautiful handmade mug in this pale purple that goes from very pale to a little bit deeper of a purple. And I bought this at the, from the cleverest little Renaissance fair uh, booth called Get Stoned uh, several years ago. And I really like this mug for wellness teas because I like my wellness tea to be strong because I feel like it's more effective that way. Um, but I also don't like to drink a ton of it. So strong, but not a ton of it. So this little tiny mug is just the perfect amount. We're going to put it down now because yeah. So back in my sewing room, welcome back to my sewing room. Um, not going to promise that I'm always going to film in my sewing room. It is already starting to get back into very disastrous, uh, mode. I did love all of your advice on how to hang, uh, or store my hoop skirts and bustles and big bustle skirts and I've decided directly behind the camera is a just a big flat piece of wall so I was thinking I'm going I would have this huge hook I'm gonna hang up high on that wall and I'm just gonna pile them up there I think um, my other thought that I had was to store them on a hook a little lower on this wall back here so that they can hang behind the sewing table. So I would hang them on a hook that's about this high behind the sewing table. So all I need to do is kind of move the sewing table out a little bit because my sewing table's on wheels and then grab whatever hoops I need. One of those things is going to happen at some point in time. I don't know when, can't guarantee. We'll see. Things move slowly in my house. So we went over the green dress that I proved does exist uh, in my very late video last week. That was so late it aired on Monday, but it did air and that is what is important to me. Uh, the green dress is kind of in a timeout right now because I have worked on it so long and so had so much trouble with it. But I don't think it's going to be in a timeout for very long. I have about two projects, two or three projects in mind, and then I think it's going to be the green dress's turn again to uh, have some corrections made to it. So we'll see. We will see. Uh, I have a few little local events. Uh, with uh, local groups and friends coming up within the next couple of months. But the next 
big event that I have is Costume College 2022. I still can't believe that I am going. I owe the fact that I am going to my incredible husband, my handsome hubby, who is just thoughtful and sweet and kind and awesome. Uh, also, uh, can be bullied easily. No, I'm just kidding. Kind of, sort of, not really. Yeah, well, I don't bully him. I encourage, I inspire, don't bully. I don't nag, I inspire. I like that better, I inspire. Anyway, uh, he has agreed to, we, we've come up with a budget for it and I am able to go, which I think is just wonderful. Um, it's got to be hard on a significant other or a spouse when one of you likes to go to events and conventions and all of these things and make all this stuff and it all costs money and the other one doesn't. So one of you has got a very expensive hobby and the other one doesn't. That's got to be kind of hard. Um, I look a little different today because I, my makeup is really weird. <laughs> I can't find my makeup bag from the trip this last weekend that had like all my makeup in it. So any makeup that I'm wearing right now, I found randomly in drawers in my bathroom. So basically the only makeup I really have on is some blue eyeshadow. Um, I'm sad about this, especially because I have broken out quite a lot. And that is because last weekend I wore a lot of sunscreen and I would reapply my sunscreen a bunch. And that causes me to break out a, a lot. So, um, I am glad that I am not burnt. I would rather break out than be burnt, but the breaking out and the acne is also not fun at all. So that was a weird tangent back to costume college, costume college. The theme this year is, uh, dressing the apocalypse. I think something like that, something along the lines of the apocalypse or coming out of the apocalypse or something like that, which I can see where they came up with this theme but it's, it's not a super fun theme for, I'd say for a lot of historical costumers because, uh, I don't know. It just, it, it doesn't, it's hard to think of something that kind of fits our aesthetic and that aesthetic at the same time. But one of the lovely things about costume college is you can dress up for the themes or you can not dress up for the themes at all. In fact, a lot of people put together uh, other groups to dress up in their own themes. Uh, and 2019, sorry, I keep having to skip two years. In 2019, I was in a Disney bustle group where you created a bustle dress uh, themed on one of Disney's characters. And for some reason I got the amazing deal of doing Cinderella. Someone else was going to do Cinderella and then they dropped out and I was like, wait, I'm going to drop whatever I was doing and I'm going to do Cinderella. So I got to do Cinderella and it turned out to be extra delightful fun because my dear friend, Lady Rebecca Fashions did Fairy Godmother. So we have some adorable pictures of us together with her waving her wand and me twirling and they're, they're super cute. Um, I don't know how to insert things into videos. You know, if I magically am able to learn how to insert things into videos, then there'll be something here and maybe something over here, or maybe they'll both be over here or over here, or maybe they'll be here in my face. I don't know but I doubt it's going to happen. So, um, maybe I'll do some, some reminders of that on my Instagram this week. 
of my Cinderella bustle dress and uh, me and Lady Rebecca Fashion's uh, bustle dress cosplays together. And I do consider them cosplays. They're historical based cosplays because we were, we did make an outfit based on an, a character, you know, Cinderella and Fairy Godmother. And we were dressed up and in our pictures we were pretending to be them. So technically it was cosplaying. Um, there's people who kind of, there's some talk about, there's some discussion about historical cosplay and if that's actually a thing and whatnot. I definitely think that making a bustle dress that is Cinderella and her fair godmother that's like based on a specific character that's out there is definitely cosplay. Now, if you are making a historical outfit that is based on an actual historical person, I don't know if I'd call that cosplay. That's more like reenactment or, or something like that, I would say. But I don't want to get into that because this is not my realm, people. I do not know the things. If you have an opinion, I'd love to hear it. Just don't be mean to me because I don't know, okay? I really don't know. Uh, so, Costume College at the end of July. It's the last weekend of July. But I also am in the beginnings of my final semester of college. Woo! Yeah, for me, final semester of college. Uh, with two of the hardest, most homework heavy classes I've ever taken. In fact, not even two, one. One of my classes, I'm taking two classes this semester, but both are like monsters. And one of them is this research methods class. And for example, there's like three different homework things due this week and all of them take several hours and hours of study and research and to, and then you have to type everything up. And then the worst part is it has to be in your own words because it all goes through this system called turn it in, which checks for like plagiarism. Now, none of us would want to, plagiarize anything, but you literally have to change so much of it to be in your own words that you are rewriting an entire, like an entire chapter in a book. And it's exhausting because some of these words, I'm just barely learning what they mean and trying to figure out how to replace it. Okay. Now I'm talking about homework. You don't want to hear about that. Anyway, needless to say, I'm frustrated and I'm really busy. And that makes it really hard to do sew sewing for my big upcoming costume college. So I am going to have to be very careful about my spare time and my, and what I sew the next few months, because that is all that I get. Um, I need to, I'm going to, build out a whole schedule for costume college. Some people like to now with costume college, you don't even have to dress up. I want this to be very clear to all of you. If you've never been to costume college before and you're like, I wouldn't even have any costumes to wear. I've never made anything or I don't feel comfortable wearing something I've sewn or you don't even have to dress up. There is a vast majority of people who go to costume college just to go to the classes and to enjoy and to see other people's costumes and to talk to costumers and to make friends and to network and, and you go to class and there's people in their jeans and their t-shirts and their, and their, whatever they're comfortable wearing to class. You, you don't have to dress up to enjoy costume college. For some of us, it's just kind of an extra bonus. Now, some people will make an entire costume to wear during the day of costume college and then change for the theme at night. There's an event every night at costume college, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night is the big gala. This year, the theme is Titanic. I have not bought a gala ticket because it is so expensive and I just did not know how to put that in my budget. But I have to admit, I'm... Oh, the Titanic. What a theme. Um, 
Now, I, I realize that Titanic doesn't seem to go with the post-apocalyptic theme, but back in 2020 for Costume College, they were going to do the, the night on the Titanic theme, and it was all planned and beautifully, you know, and, and then it didn't happen. So I'm pretty sure what's happened is they said, we have this all designed and all planned out. Let's just go with it. And I'm all for that because a night on the Titanic sounds amazing. Apparently they're going to have like a backdrop of the grand staircase you can take your picture in front of. And they're going to have like a meal served that's like the meal they could, they got on the Titanic. And then there's going to also be, every table is going to be themed towards people in each, each class of the Titanic. Cause you know, there was the upper class and then the middle and the lower class areas of the Titanic. It, it sounds amazing. Oh, it really does. And then Sunday, there's a themed tea. And again, you can dress for the themes or not, not at all. My very first year at Costume College in 2018, the theme for Costume College that year was dressing the royals, which was right up my alley because I played Queen Elizabeth for nine years at Renaissance fairs. So when the gala came around, I just completely Queen Elizabeth Elizabeth myself up and had an absolute ball. So that's, that's my kind of aesthetic is going all shiny, fancy, pretty, you know, so dressing for the apocalypse, honestly, um, I'm going to tell you a secret. I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell you a secret. Okay. There's a bin right here. I don't know why I have a bin between me and the camera. That's just how I roll. So here is my secret. Don't, don't tell anyone else, okay? One of my guilty pleasures is post-apocalyptic books and movies. Especially movies, because I have no time to read right now. I love post-apocalyptic movies. Have you seen the Book of Eli? Oh my gosh! It's amazing. I can't tell you any more about it, because, like, spoilers. So, so good. And I'm, like, one of the 10% of people on the planet who love Waterworld. I love Waterworld, but then again, I love the ocean. So the idea of the ocean just covering the world and us living on like water communities sounds amazing. And, um, I, I, I could keep going, but I love, I love post-apocalyptic movies. So when I hear a theme about post-apocalyptic, I mean, they're obviously kind of doing a nod to kind of post COVID world. My brain is like Mad Max and, you know, ratty clothes that you've been climbing through the desert looking for water and your, your motorcycle glasses covered with grime and your hair all, you know, ratted out and stuff. And as, as much as I love that in my movies, I really don't want to wear that myself. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. But I need to make plans. I need to make plans quickly. I want to make sure that whatever I do wear um, fits into my sewing plans. So I don't just want to make something that I'm going to wear at costume college for some very specific thing. And then I'm not going to wear again. Because for someone like me who takes so long to sew... Um, that's wasteful. I need stuff that I can wear again and again and again. So I am going to look at my list of time periods that I have not touched and that I would like to get done and look at my fabrics and make out a list and make out a plan. And then next video, I'm going to have a sewing plan for all of you. I do know that the two hour skirt that I made for the Victorian Heritage Festival weekend um, I would really like to, it needs to be like an inch longer. I don't know what's wrong. Everything I make is too short. It doesn't matter how carefully I measure. It just, it's everything I make is too short. It's always too short. Walking skirt length touches the top of your feet. People, your ankles should not be showing. It's ridiculous. I don't know what's wrong with me. It's cause I don't do math. My, that's why my measurements are always off. I do not do math, any kind of math. No, I count on my fingers. And when I get to 10, we're, we're done now. That's it. That's all I can do. 
Um, I know I want to do a full outfit for that with like a vest and maybe one of those cute ties the girls would wear, possibly a matching uh, jacket, you know, cute jacket to go with the kind of 19 or 1894 to 96 uh, walking skirt, walking uh, era. era. Um, and that would be a great one to wear during the day at Costume College because if you're going to wear a costume, if you're going to wear something like that to during the day to your classes in Costume College, you want to steer away from anything big, bulky, it's going to be too hot, anything that could possibly get in the way of other people that could take up more than one seat, all this stuff. Anything you're going to wear to classes, you want it to be you know, comfortable and only affect you and your air in your personal space. Um, uh, my first costume college, one of the classes I was in, someone was in a 17th century dress with these panniers and she sat down next to me and her pannier just like thumped me in the side. And I was like, and I had someone sitting on the other side of me. I wasn't going to scoot into them. And she turned and gave me a dirty look like you're in my way. And I'm just like, you're, you're in my seat. I mean, come on. I, I wanted to be like, I'm sorry, but you don't, you don't fit here. Could you move over to where there's empty seats next to each other or something? And I had to deal with this pannier, like digging into my hip the whole time. And this girl obviously upset about this. So, um, just keep that in mind if you go, you know. Now, during the evening events, wear whatever you want. Be as glam, huge, fantastic as you want. But during the day, if you're going to wear costumes to uh, the classes, you know, you might want to tone it down a little bit. Um, I like to wear typically kind of my everyday retro-ish wear. I know it's really hard to pin down my everyday wear. My mom who visited recently was kind of asking me, you know, Emily, what do you wear every day? I mean, today is probably the least likely outfit you'll see me in. I'm in this like thermal shirt. I call this, these type of clothes, my house clothes, which means I would not leave the house in this. Um, I would call my, my daily aesthetic outside of the house kind of a retro, which is kind of the 50s, 1950s, 60s, vintage, late Victorian, vintage means late Victorian, uh, modern-esque fantasy. <laughs> I, I wear what I like. I mishmash it all together. I wear what makes me happy that day. And if I look at two things and I'm like, oh, I love the way these look together. I don't care if you know, this blouse looks like it's from the 50s and that's a walking skirt from the 1890s and this belt is obviously modern. I think they look good together. I'm going to wear them. Um, so, next video, I will have a plan for costume college and uh, we can go over that. I, again, need to dig through fabrics and see what I have, see what see what I already have. Cause that's my goal is to kind of use what I already have. I'm also going to dig through my bins of unfinished projects and see if any of those might work. Um, I do have a few events coming up within the next month and, and uh, the next few months between now and costume college that I think I'd like new outfits for. And based on the events, those outfits could easily be good daytime costumes for classes at costume college. So, or evening wear. I don't know. I don't know. You guys, it's so stressful. It's the second I press off on this video, I have to go work on my homework next in the room next door because homework, it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, the stress is real, my friends. The stress, the anxiety, it is real. But I tell you, I am blessed. 
I am so blessed. And I just try to remember that every time I get really stressed out, um, school's almost done. If I can just survive the semester and pass, uh, school is done. And, um, and then, and then whatever comes after that. I'm not going to worry about that today. I will worry about that tomorrow. I love you all. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. I think you're magical, wonderful people. And uh, again, I love hearing all about you, and what you're working on and what you're excited about and uh, your thoughts and your feelings and your... Do you make pie? I love pie. I'm really craving pie right now. My mom makes a really good raspberry pie. I really, really love peach pie. My handsome hubby is really into like the, the cream pies, like chocolate pie and banana and, and coconut cream pie, you know. I like those too, but I love myself a good fruit pie. Um, there's a song from a movie about pie. Pie. Pie, me oh my, I love pie. Michael. It's from the movie Michael. Did you ever see that with, uh, what's his name? John Travolta. About the, like, angel who lives on Earth and has to get back. And he's, like, affecting everyone's lives while he's on this, like, quest to get back or something. <sighs> ah, okay. Um... Ending the video now. Thank you for listening and watching. Um, okay, bye.